Microsoft made an announcement at the beginning of March regarding Microsoft Flight Simulator moving onto their cloud gaming platform. So what you may say? Well, this evolutionary step is likely to have a big influence on our decisions regarding hardware in the future. This is a step change, like it or not, and it's going to affect us all. In this brief introductory video, I'll be explaining exactly what it is, how you can use it, and where you can get it. Welcome to the Sim Hanger. My name's Mark. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. Well, we've all heard about using the computing power in the cloud and streaming data live. Well, for Microsoft Flight Simulator, this is now reality. Oh, if you're wondering about the picture insert in the top right hand corner of this video, that's Microsoft Flight Simulator loading up on my Apple iPad. And I'm showing the process from the very beginning to the end so you get an idea of just how long it takes. OK, so exactly what is this cloud gaming platform? Well, we're not going to run into all the technical details. But in simple terms, you access the cloud on just about any device that you've got and gain the computing power of an Xbox Series X. You can then choose a game or application and it will stream directly to your device. The restriction obviously being your bandwidth of your internet connection. Depending on the platform that you're using, you're going to need bandwidth something from 7 to about 20 megabytes. But obviously, like all things, bigger is better. For my iPad, my bandwidth here is 30 megabyte. And remember, that's your download, not your upload speed. In addition to having a suitable internet speed, you're also going to require an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription. In the UK at the moment, for the first month is £1 and thereafter £10.99 per month. Prices in other parts of the world do vary. To find the Xbox Gaming Cloud, which by the way is still in beta, I did a Google search for PC Game Pass. I'll leave a link to this site in the notes below and here you can also get your ultimate subscription. But going to the top menu and choosing Game Pass, and from the drop down menu, we choose the Xbox Cloud Gaming. Here there's a wealth of information on the Xbox Gaming Pass as well as the Cloud Gaming Beta. Here you can find what devices are supported and in which countries it's valid. But to get your hands on Cloud Gaming is fairly straightforward and the setup is very simple. At the top of the page, click on Ways to Play. And here it presents you with the different options available to access the cloud, be that directly from an Xbox, from a PC, or perhaps from an Android, or Apple phone, or even a Samsung. In my case, I've clicked on the Apple option. And here you can just search for the game or the sim that you're looking for. In my case, obviously, Microsoft Flight Simulator. I click on that. And this is where I've got to sign in with my Microsoft account and it will automatically pick up that I've got Game Pass Ultimate. Now obviously I've done this on my Apple iPad. Once I'm signed in it says play. Once I click on that well then the loading process will begin. There's a short delay while it streams initial data and then the program starts to load as you've seen above. And perfect timing 3 minutes 30 seconds and it's loaded. A couple of points to note. To navigate the menus and control the aircraft, only an Xbox controller is currently supported. And you link that to your device via Bluetooth. My Xbox controller linked to no problem. My PC Xbox controller was not compatible and wouldn't link. Secondly, and I stand to be corrected, but I think it'll only display in 1080p. Nonetheless, and as we'll see just now, I was very impressed with the graphics when looking at it on my Apple tablet. But this is much more than just being able to play it on a multiple number of different devices. Although it is handy, obviously, that you can play Microsoft Flight Simulator when on the move, or not at home. The one significant issue is if your PC is not capable currently of running Microsoft Flight Simulator smoothly, well, you now have this option. It's an alternative to investing in more expensive computer hardware, ridiculously priced graphics cards. Although I recognize and acknowledge that this is not for everyone. For the hardened simmers that want the peripherals, the improved graphics, the access to third-party apps, then this is not for you. But it's certainly a significant step and who knows where it will lead. And overall, performance-wise, well, it was as good 
as my Xbox Series X. When you download Microsoft Flight Simulator, you download the standard version. But if you've upgraded to Premium or Deluxe, as well as any Marketplace purchases, you do have to download these again, but they are fully accessible. And you gain the benefit of such purchases. Obviously, no third-party apps though. As you saw, I've downloaded the Staggerwing. There are no graphic options as displayed, but nearly all the other menus are exactly the same as per the Xbox and the PC. Multiplayer is fully supported. I needn't say this, but somebody will ask, so no, VR is not supported on the stream. So, let's give it a quick test. I'm going to take my Beechcraft D17S Staggerwing out into Norway and give it a go. Let's click on Fly. This is my first attempt, by the way. I'm not going to edit out the loading process or anything. I want you to be able to see it live and see how long it takes. I've been very pleasantly surprised at how quick everything has been, including a test load that I did earlier. Almost no difference between this, my PC, and the Xbox Series X. Now I don't normally fly using the controller, so you'll have to bear with me. I'm much happier using a joystick or a yoke and throttle quadrant and so on. It's now loaded up and you can get your first impression in terms of the graphics fidelity that's available. I'm pretty sure it's 1080p, but on the high res and glossy iPad screen, well, it looks just great. I can see the texturing on the ground and the detail modeling of the aircraft and its textures, as well as PBR rendering. I'm now going to attempt a quick flight. I'll use the external model so we can see more, but I'm not going to talk all the way through it. You can make your own judgment in terms of performance and graphics. This is a recording directly from the iPad, including sound. So we can now sim on our phone, on our tablet, on our Xbox and on our PC. Times certainly are changing, but this technology holds bright prospects for the future. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, may well change the way we view flight sim and hardware in the future. And in addition and importantly, will give us another option in terms of future hardware upgrades. So what do you think about this new cloud platform? Good or bad thing? I'd love to know your reaction. Please comment below. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found this useful and informative. See you again soon. Stay well. Look after yourselves. Bye for now.